Hey guys, Prowl1701 here, and today, it's such a nice day outside, I thought I would do a review outside, which will be my first review I've done outside, but it is, the weather's really nice, it's kind of transitioning from um, summer to winter, and uh, as most of you know, I live in the states, and in the south, it's usually either hot or cold here, we don't really get comfortable weather very often. Uh, and it actually feels really good out today. So I thought we would talk about the Edge of Destruction outside. Now I had seen part one of the Edge of Destruction before. I wasn't really impressed with it. I had never watched part two. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and watch both of them since I own both of them since I bought the beginning DVD set uh, with it in it. And I didn't really care for it. I didn't hate it. Um, but it was kind of, kind of like the Dominators where I was just kind of trudging through it. And I'm like, well, it's only two episodes. I can get through it. I can get through it. But then I found I really liked the ending. Uh, the ending really kind of saves it for me. Uh, because, I don't know, with all of it... I know that it was tacked on simply because the original order was for like 13 episodes. And they had two left. So they just kind of squeezed in Edge of Destruction. You know, it's all filmed in the TARDIS. So it's nothing fancy. Ian, Ian's acting is, uh, well not Ian, um, William's acting's a little odd here, but I think it's because his character is supposed to be kind of suspicious since the characters don't know what's going on and we're supposed to not know what's going on and maybe there's something that's taken over somebody, you know, that idea is kind of batted around in it. And so maybe that's why Ian is supposed to be acting a little weird. Of course the blast of the TARDIS knocking him down has all of them a little off kilter except Barbara. Um, it's really weird watching the Doctor be so suspicious of people. I keep forgetting, you know, it's early days of Hartnell, and he's not exactly the hero Doctor that we're most of us are used to. He's very, uh, <laughs> he's kind of a selfish, grumpy old man. Um, so seeing him kind of threatening to throw them off the ship and everything, I really like this, because even this early on, we, we really get the idea of the TARDIS being a living thing when finding out that it is actually the TARDIS trying to warn them in its own way. Uh, so finding out that the TARDIS is a living thing and that it can uh, you know, do things on its own and seeing it act like that's really neat that it has its own type of intelligence. It's really nice seeing that so early in the series. Uh, Susan has some really creepy moments in this. I'm not a big fan of Susan as a companion. I don't know, part of it's maybe Carol's acting, part of it's the way just the characters are written, but I'm just not a big fan of Susan. She really perturbs me. But uh, there are some shots in this of her where she's just creepy. I don't know, there's one shot where she walks in and there's even like some incidental music there that like is you know very fitting to her walking in. This look on her face. I've had a couple times where girls I've dated have given me that look and my first thought is, uh-oh. What am I about to get? What did I do that I'm about to get yelled at for? Or what in no way at all is related to me am I still about to get yelled at for? Yeah, she looked creepy in places. I love the fact that Barbara is the one that saves the day. Because uh, Barbara is a very strong character. And we don't really get that as much from her, I think, in the first two stories. She does have her strong moments in them. But then she also kind of has that flighty 60s woman damsel in distress thing. That It's the 60s, you know. You kind of have to forgive it. Um, but she is the one who saves the day here. She's the one who figures out, you know, it's the TARDIS trying to warn them and what they need, what they need to do. So it, it really is thanks to her that they survive. And I really think that's really neat. And I love that because of that, I think this is the first time we actually see the first Doctor genuinely warm up to Ian and Barbara. Because I think before the end of this, he had just kind of seen them as, ah, oh, I've got to take them with me. Ah. Oh. You know, they know my secret, I've got to take them with me. And he didn't really want to, he just kind of had to, so they're kind of forced on him. He kind of tolerates them at best, but after realizing he's kind of underestimated her, he seems a lot nice to her at the end. I really actually enjoy seeing Hartnell here, kind of having some caring moments here. Like, uh, right, at, right at the end when he's talking to Susan and he makes that, you know, I think your grandfather's going a bit around the bin. <laughs> he's giving her that hug, it's a very tender moment. It's one of the first really tender moments I can think of seeing with the first Doctor, you know, chronologically. And I enjoy that he's poking fun at himself, and I like the fact that it's kind of amusing that he can't 
uh, quite apologize to Ian since they're both guys, you know, they kind of have that male ego butting heads that they have. So I think that's uh, pretty neat as well, even though Ian gets it. And then, of course, I enjoy watching him actually apologize to Barbara and say that he's sorry to Barbara. I know, and you know that has to be hard for the first doctor to do. The first doctor, you know, he does kind of have that stubborn pride thing going. So actually being able to see him apologize to Barbara. And I love at the end when he, um, when he goes in and talks to her and then he walks out arm in arm with her and he's smiling. You know, you actually do kind of get this uh, sense that he actually does kind of like them, that they're growing on him a bit, and that he's actually, there's a part of him at least that's kind of happy to have them there. Uh, and I really liked that. It saved the story for me. Because up to that point, I was like, it's kind of like the Dominators. I'm not really enjoying this. I don't hate it, but I wasn't really enjoying it. Uh, but that ending really saved it for me. It's kind of like the reverse of Listen. The first time I watched Listen, I actually liked Listen all the way up to the ending. And I hated the ending so much, it just kind of ruined the whole story for me. And because of that, I hate Listen. Uh, this is kind of the opposite. I, I, I didn't hate it, but I just wasn't engaged with it. It was one of those things, I'm like, well, it's only two episodes, I can get through it. I can say I've seen the whole thing, and I won't have to watch it again for a while. But then that ending is so good that I did actually really enjoy the ending. It's still not one I'll go back and watch a while, because it is just kind of some eh stuff to get through to get to that ending. But the ending is really good and does save the story and make it watchable. So I did enjoy this watch through of The Edge of Destruction, really watching the whole thing for the first time. The ending was a pleasant surprise and really turned the story around for me. So what are your thoughts of The Edge of Destruction? Comment down below and let me know what you think of it. I always enjoy hearing from you guys. If you want to see more videos like this kind of done in a different setting, let me know. I rather enjoyed that. Other things to do, click the like button, click the subscribe button, click the bell for notifications so you never miss out on another video. I also have a Patreon if you like what I do and want to contribute to what I do. There is a link to that down in the description below. Most importantly though, thank you for watching.